six. Master the art of insinuation. You can't pass through life without in one way or another trying to persuade people of something. Take the direct route, saying exactly what you want, and your honesty may make you feel good, but you are probably not getting anywhere. People have their own sets of ideas which are hardened into stone by habit. Your words entering their minds compete with the thousands of preconceived notions that are already there and get nowhere. Besides, people resent your attempt to persuade them as if they were incapable of deciding by themselves, as if you knew better. Consider instead the power of insinuation and suggestion. It requires some patience and art, but the results are more than worth it. The way insinuation works is simple. Disguised in a banal remark or encounter, a hint is dropped. It is about some emotional issue, a possible pleasure not yet attained, a lack of excitement in a person's life. The hint registers in the back of the target's mind, a subtle stab at his or her insecurities. Its source is quickly forgotten. It is too subtle to be memorable at the time, and later, when it takes root and grows, it seems to have emerged naturally from the target's own mind, as if it was there all along. Insinuation lets you bypass people's natural resistance, for they seem to be listening only to what has originated in themselves. It is a language on its own, communicating directly with the unconscious. No seducer, no persuader, can hope to succeed without mastering the language and art of insinuation. Slips of the tongue, apparently inadvertent sleep-on-it comments, alluring references, statements for which you quickly apologize, all of these have immense insinuating power. They get under people's skin and take on a life of their own. The key to succeeding with your insinuations is to make them when your targets are at their most relaxed or distracted so that they are not aware of what is happening. Polite banter is often the perfect front for this. People are thinking about what they will say next or are absorbed in their own thoughts. Your insinuations will barely register, which is how you want it. In one of his early campaigns, John F. Kennedy addressed a group of veterans. Kennedy's brave exploits during World War II, the PT-109 incident that made him a war hero, were known to all. But in the speech, he talked of the other men on the boat, never mentioning himself. He knew, however, that what he had done was on everyone's mind, because, in fact, he had put it there. Not only did his silence on the subject make them think of it on their own, it made Kennedy seem humble and modest, qualities that go well with heroism. In seduction, as the French courtesan Ninon de L'Enclos advised, it is better not to talk about your love for a person. Let your target read it in your manner. Your silence on the subject will have more insinuating power than if you had addressed it directly. Not only words insinuate. Pay attention to gestures and looks. The face speaks its own language. We are used to trying to read people's faces, which are often better indicators of their feelings than what they say which is so easy to control. Since people are always reading your looks, use them to transmit the insinuating signals you choose. Finally, the reason insinuation works so well is not just that it bypasses people's natural resistance. It is also the language of pleasure. There is too little mystery in the world. Too many people say exactly what they feel or want. We yearn for something enigmatic, for something to feed our fantasies. Because of the lack of suggestion and ambiguity in daily life, the person who uses them suddenly seems to have something alluring and full of promise. It's a kind of titillating game. What is this person up to? What does he mean or she mean? Hints, suggestions, and insinuations create a seductive atmosphere signaling that their victim is no longer involved in the routines of daily life, but has entered into another realm. <laughs>